What is good? We're back. Got a little remote bipod going on. How you doing, Matt? I am doing well. Loving this weather. Um, mm-hmm. If you're if you have gotten snow recently, sucks to suck. It was 85 <laughs> degrees today. Deal with it. For sure. Um, so we are going to hit you with some dynasty trades. Going to hit you with six trades that you must make right now. Absolutely, positively, a hundred percent must trade right now. What are you doing if you're not? I got I got three guys. Matt has three guys. You know, kind of some ranges of price points a little bit. I think my guys are a little higher than than Matt's, but we got a super flex quarterback in there um, and some receivers and one running back. So uh, we're going to keep throwing these at you all season long we got plenty of other guys we got a list a mile long we're going to give you six right now um we gave you some uh before like the likes of madison naji uh swift mooney um who'd you have before do you remember you probably Najee. algier i'm sure i had algier, algier. yeah so you can go back and find that and then we got some some super cheap stashes and super cheap easy pickups uh Go check all that stuff out um, and go ahead and like, subscribe, all that jazz. So leading it off for me, I'll start off. I'm going to go Hollywood Brown. And we have been conducting, we're we're, we're building up and having a program built to have our own ADP calculated. So we're we're four draft deep so far over over the last like month and a half. Hollywood's at 7.1 average ADP. And I've been taking him in a lot of those. So he might have even fallen a little later than that in some other ones. But really, it's just... I don't think we're appreciating how good Hollywood Brown was to start this season. Um, He was injured week six. Before that, he was wide receiver five through that time, uh, wide receiving seven in points per game, 18.3, fourth in targets, you know, three TDs through week six, so a TD basically every other week. We think Nuke is is possibly getting out of town. It seems like all signs pointing that way, and some of that damage with Hollywood uh, was sans Nuke. Um, But then, you know, you get – Week 12 is back. Now, unfortunately, Kyler goes out shortly after that. But even then, like the targets are still there. Now, is he performing super well with a backup quarterback and maybe super injured? No, but still, you know, eight targets, eight targets, eight targets, six targets, nine targets, uh, you know, s- still out there doing his damn thing. So I just want to I want to throw Hollywood up there. I would I would throw a late first at Brown easily. Um and 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 pick him up for what could be uh you got rondell on the other side who would have would be maybe a trade target for me in, in this one but i didn't want to throw two cardinals <laughs> at everybody um so i got i got hollywood brown as as my first trade target uh in this series what do you think matt um i mean i'm coming around to hollywood but he's just never been a guy i've been super interested in i'm interested to see what that what that looks that team looks like with a with a regime change there going from an offense going from an offensive minded head coach to a defensive minded head coach. Um, how's that, how's that team going to look? Um, what's Kyler going to look like? Seems like he might miss some time going into the yeah. season. Um, I was going to point like- out that there could be potentially a, a another little buy window. If, if the Cardinals start slow with a backup. Oh, yeah. I would, for, I slow. would think that I would think that Kyler doesn't start the season for the Cardinals yeah. as the starter. Um, I think that price is a little bit baked in, but I still think I'm there with you. There's a little bit of value there where Hollywood's in the range where I'm, I'd be getting to take a look at him. Um, I really wouldn't want him to have him higher than higher than was my wide receiver three um, to, for make, to make me feel comfortable. But I think he can give you those um, high end wide receiver two, low end wide receiver one weeks at times. It's just how often are those going to happen? So again, like you said, nukes, nukes out of town. Through those first six weeks, he was a WR five, so he can give you those wide receiver one weeks. No, I don't. I'm, I'm right there. And him have yeah. history, uh, yeah, and and the, the targets are are were, were tremendous. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm right. I, I'm with you. I'm with you there. That him, the uh, rapport with him and Kyler is obviously strong. I've never been a Hollywood. Like I said, I've never been a Hollywood guy, but I think I'm coming yeah. around on because I don't hate. I I mean, obviously, we're talking about we're doing those rookie evaluations. We can only do it from a player perspective, but I think the value that those players have is a little bit baked in for me with there with that as well, too. Um, mm-hmm. And Hollywood's always gone higher than where I would have really liked to take him, but I guess he's coming into a spot where he's a little bit more interesting to me with the body of work he's shown. And um, obviously him going from 
Baltimore to Arizona was, uh, I think, was huge for him as well too, because the the perce- the the perception that the target was higher, or that the that the um uh, that his um volume volume yes volume was going to go up. It, it did. I, I think it definitely did. So um, yeah. something I'm definitely considering him with 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 the new team. It's just what does that new team look like? Is this can be the Ravens 2.0 with a? I don't even know who the offensive coordinator is in Arizona. Mm, that's a good. But I'm question. assuming they'll be calling plays. Yeah, I'd be yeah. very surprised if they weren't. I don't think the defense, the head coach, isn't going to call defensive plays. So it seems like he's, uh, you know, delegating all that. So who who would yeah. be your first uh, trade target here? We'll go back and forth. Um, it's Drew Pets Petsing, by the way, as the OC for the for the Cardinals. Yep, he is. Let's look to see. He was the looks like the quarterbacks coach for the uh, Cleveland Browns. Mm, all right. Prior to his stop with the uh, at the as the offensive coordinator of the Vikings. Um, I'm going to go dirt cheap here. Um, ADP dad on this guy so far is uh, pretty is uh, is nothing with our four mocks. Um, this is a bit of a dart throw for me. It's a super I think it's a low cost. It's a um, high upside pick here. Um, with Tycon Tycoon Thornton, mm-hmm. um, had a lot of great numbers coming out of college in terms of those analytic numbers you're looking at. Had a great dominator rating, great breakout age, um, and I think that that we're talking about we're talking about regime changes with going from Patricia back to Bill O'Brien. I think it's only going to help the entirety of that Patriots offense. Spoiler alert, another Patriots soon be coming up here probably very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think your reasons for this will be the similar as that offense was was a captain without a ship last year or a ship yeah. without a captain last year because who knows what Patricia or Judge or what the hell they were doing there. <laughs> so um, they need a deep threat. The guys they have coming back are just possession receivers to a certain extent. I think Parker is okay. Bourne's okay. That I would, I'd be surprised if they don't address that through free agency of the draft. Um, but there's not a lot of guys that can stretch the field like Thornton does as well, too. Um, so yeah. he, he, I, I don't think you're paying more than a, than a late third or a fourth for him right now. So I think it's a, a effective way to get some uh, to get some upside built into your lineup. And if it doesn't work out, it's such a late pick. Why does it matter? Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. And um, I, I think there was some splashy plays from him last year. Um, yeah. You know, he. he had a couple of games where it was good. He had the injured off season and then uh, kind of came on. And then I think he was a little banged up again. Yeah. Uh, Another so great point there about him having a full off season right. with the, with the Patriots as well too, should be help should be. And, and the second round capital on him. I know it doesn't matter quite as much when, you know, established on the team, but um, you know, it, it certainly can help to keep, keep you relevant. So, and I, I I can I can piggyback right off of that with my um, my second guy. I'm going to go with Mac Jones um, with our ADP. He's at nine point two, um, so ninth round, tenth round is is nine nine one nine six ten ten eleven uh, and eight three. So the eight three bumped him up a little bit, and and we're going to keep those rolling. Uh, but. Uh, Really good value right now. I know nobody likes Mac Jones. He's he's fun to hate, and you know I think these Patriot fans really forget that you guys were so irrelevant for so long, and then Tom came around, and you got this attitude now that you expect to be great when you were a dumpster fire for so long. Um, give Mac a chance. There was flashes in that rookie year where he was great. He had five top ten finishes as a rookie. You know that's that's pretty solid. You know. And you had an actual coordinator with McDaniels and you guys are going in and figuring things out a little bit. You see that there was flashes that, Hey, this guy can't operate a pro style system or a, or I know he was kind of doing so at, at Alabama, but can't operate a system in the pros rather is a better put. And, you know, like you said, you're out there with a DC call and plays, no business being out there. You get Bill O'Brien back in there. There's continuity with him and Belichick. They know what to expect from each other. They've been in the system. They've been around each other. It's not some guy that's got to get used to the way the Patriots do things and the and, and Bill wants things done. He knows exactly how. You know, Max a competitor. He's got that that fire in him. You, you saw that at last year. Like what basically saying on the field, like what the fuck are we doing? You know, just just running. A bad offense. So I think Bill's going to come 
the ship now you had Thornton as your last guy. I think they absolutely need to address that. That's part of, you know, Hunter Henry, I think is a, you know, a pretty good tight end. And then you have Thornton and, and I don't, I don't hate Parker, uh, but you need something else. Now they do have an option at the top of the draft. I believe they pick uh 14th, I think uh, not a hundred percent sure, but that somewhere sounds, right around in there. Some in that range. Uh, yeah. In the middle of first. So, you know, that's that could be a receiver if they want, or they could wait till the second round and grab another receiver. You know, if, if somebody like a Jordan Addison or, you know, maybe they trade back a Zay Flowers, a Boston College guy from that area um, could give them that kind of receiver that they seem to have had success with in the past. Those those type of receivers, they, you know, I know that was a McDaniel system. Uh, but they seem to know how to use those type of guys. I know this year was not great for Mac Jones. Even getting benched at one point. What's that? Even getting benched at one point. Right. Well, I mean, he was coming off an injury and then they put Zappy in and it was <laughs> Zappy was an absolute. They were calling for him and then he un, unraveled uh, with the quickness. The Patriots are sixth in cap space. Now, there's not a whole lot of free agent wide receivers there to come to immediately just bulk up that. That receiving core, maybe Jacoby Myers comes back. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe I hope don't. Jacoby leaves. Yeah, I mean, it's it's for you. You're you're a big Jacoby guy, um, you know. He, but that could be good for Mac for him to come back. Like you said, the 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 wide receiver free agent pool is not great. It's it's Ooh. Juju and and Chark and you know which you know I don't mind either one of those guys. Maybe they don't pony up, but they, they could certainly trade for somebody. Uh, because there is so much cap space and, and get themselves, you know, a, a good veteran wide receiver without any issues to pay him in the long term. And, you know, let's not forget that, you know, just just last year before Peterson took over, T-Law was quarterback 22, averaging 12.71 a game. Just yeah. shows you kind of what coaching and and can can make a difference. Now, obviously, that was a whole system and Urban Meyer and all that. And <laughs> but you know, we just we you also had a guy who had no idea what he was doing, calling plays for New England. Um, and Tua, the Tua hate was super strong. Nobody liked that guy. And you see, you put weapons around him and a system that you can operate in. And all of a sudden, when Tua was right for the most part, he was a, a pretty solid starting quarterback. If he didn't have the Very, head injuries yeah. right now, I think he's a second round startup super flex pick all day long right now. Yeah. I don't know that I want to do that. And and maybe even back in the first round uh, yeah. with, with the weapons in the system. So um, it, it, things can turn so quickly and the Patriots are, are a team that you put, put some faith in what, what they can do. Um, moving forward, and like I said, six in cap space. So I think Mac Jones is is a nice a nice buy. I mean, I don't think it would cost you very much. You could cough up a second round pick. You could probably cough up, you know, a, a low level quarterback and a two just to so that you're you know super flex trade. If you could swap out Zach Wilson somehow and and figure out how to get Mac Jones out of pick to that, just you know, I think I think he's a nice two for you and really i would i'd be fine with him grabbing him as a three because i think the value he could he could be right up to a back up to a fifth round startup a decent season um yeah in this season so i think there's just a, a big even if you bought him to not start i think the value so good and and the ability to jump back up in value as a as a sale you know halfway through the season or at the end of next season i think is is uh is a good way to go about approaching Mac Jones right now. Agreed. Who's your next guy? So, if, so I was going to do, I was going to talk about Matt Stafford, but I, eh, I, I don't know how much of a buy he is. His, the, he fell off huge. I mean, I think, I think Jay Wynn and I took him in like the third round in the startup last year, or maybe even the second round. It might have even been the second round. We took him in a startup and now he was going in like the ninth round. He was going like super late. Um, but I went with another Ram. I went with Cam Akers. Um, nice. It's wild to think about Cam Akers being a buy midway through the midway through the season last year. I mean, he was away from the team. He was talking about getting released or traded. Mm -hmm. And then weeks thirteen through seventeen on the Rams, he's running back four. Right. It looked great. Just like what happened? What what happened? Playing behind a a. a uh, basically a replacement level offensive line. No Stafford was there. They knew they were going to run the ball, and yet he was still effective with running the ball, catching the ball a little bit as well too. 
He's on the field. He was working as the workhorse of the Rams. I don't see the Rams addressing that position in the draft. They have too many other holes to fill. They need to fill offensive line. They just cut Bobby Wagner. It seems highly likely they're going to trade trade Jalen Ramsey. So they Mm -hmm. need to replace him at corner. They need edge rushers. There's just, I just don't foresee that as a position of need for the Rams. Yeah. I mean, what's going to help. I mean, they have cup and then Allen Robinson and then a whole bunch of nothing. So, I mean, I do like Van Jefferson. He's a great by a cheap target to figure out if they're just going to like, what, I don't know what they're going to do with Allen Robinson. They're stuck with him for at least this year, I believe. Which I hard I hate saying they're stuck with Allen Robinson, who will always be, who will always have a spot in my heart. But yeah, it's just something clicked with him late. I don't know what it was, but something lit a fire under his ass, and he just came out and balled out the last couple, the last those last four weeks of the last four or five weeks of the season. Hendo and got he, out of the way. They, yeah. they they got rid of him. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that, that they kept Henderson. And they were having all these problems with Acres, and they still cut Henderson. Right. You know, I mean, maybe Henderson, maybe Acres just was just like, "Look, I'm the guy. Like, what's yeah. going on here? We don't know what was going on in the background there. Maybe he was tired of splitting work with Henderson." And I think that I think that he was right, and I, that was what I was saying all along. And, and maybe we do he, Henderson. He also wasn't that far removed from what you from an Achilles injury. You know, yeah, that's something that does take a little while. And you get the end of that season where you're you've been kind of slowly worked in and you haven't had a huge workload. And now back half of the season, you're feeling pretty good. So, yeah, yeah, I think you're I mean, maybe they stab at some at a running back late. It is a deep it is a deep class. They could they could potentially bring in somebody or or another another cheap veteran. Um, Sure. Nothing I'm overly concerned. Something nothing I'm overly concerned about, like they're not going to go after a Montgomery or a Sanders or something like that. I don't think that that's on their radar. They, they don't have there in cap hell, I'm sure, too. So, yeah. um, and I don't know, even know what their pick situation is. I'm they usually have some late, but I'm, they certainly don't have too many early. Uh, they're picking at the they're picking at the sixth spot in each draft, so they've got the 206. Yeah, but they're saying they could trade Ramsey to get back into the first. Yeah, so they got some some assets. He's the best return that they could get. Uh, yeah, so, you know, they're going to probably be in a bit of a little bit of a tiny rebuild here, but yeah. McVay stuck around. And I think step, you know, if McVay sticks around and Stafford can stay healthy. I think you got, you know, yeah, they could be back really quickly. And Stafford, and, yeah, Stafford's guaranteed 60 million over the next two years. He's not going anywhere for the for, through 2024. You like the way that run game look, we know the run, that there's a capable, um, running back points in in that style of system they just had been doing something different and i love the acres buy it's a, you know a lot of people are saying this might be your last chance to sell acres which you know i could if, if you're you know all everything that we're talking about and buying these guys should all be basically spoken with that if you're rebuilding or whatever then you're probably not buying any of these guys uh you're, you're doing something totally different and th- those are for yeah. rebuilding episodes so it's you know if you're yeah you know, in the middle and trying to get up and, and, and win. Um, you know, I think acres is a nice little buy right here. You've been getting them seventh, eighth, not even that. I mean, he was going round. He went 10, six, nine, 12, nine, two and eight, seven. And yeah. eight, seven is when I took him. So yeah. he was going in the ninth round before I took him. It's these, he's still, he's a guy who you're probably paying a second for at this. You know what I mean? Maybe two, maybe two seconds. I don't even but think the, it would take. I don't, I, think, I don't think so there. Either. I think people would click that button so fast if you sent him a two right now for acres because they've been, you know, everyone's telling you to sell and and that he's just been, you were so excited about him and he's been hurt. And then you just, you just haven't gotten any real production out of him. And probably if you had acres last year, your team, you, you, by the time he was doing anything, you probably weren't even paying that much attention to acres because your team was probably out of it. Yeah. Um, so, no, I like I like the acres buy here. A little running back. I know nobody likes buying running backs, but he's not super old and he doesn't have a whole lot of miles on him. And seems like he was healthy at the end of last season. And that was a great stretch. He looked really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I like that one. The last one for me is going to be Jerry Judy kind of priced similarly to what Hollywood is. He's gone seven, one, six, eleven, five, seven and seven, five. So the five, seven, a little bit of an outlier. Good for six point six average. ADP throughout our four mocks so far, but you know, this offense was broken last year. Um, we're, we're bringing in Sean Payton and it makes you feel at least a little bit more comfortable. It's, you know, I, I think Hackett is a fine OC. 
Um, I, I think that got a little overblown. It was probably too much for him to handle. And then on top of that, you're hearing some of the things that was going on with Russell Wilson. Um, and, you know, Sean Payton basically said, hey, we're not going to have any of that shit. We, you know, <laughs> we're, the, the, you know, you're not going to have your own guys here. You're not going to have your own this. You're not going to have your own that. We're going to have our guys here and that's going to be it. Um, and, you know, how do you fix the this broken system that you had? You bring in kind of what Sean Payton, easy completion screens, uh, slants and you know that that Michael Thomas uh, slant guard and, Mike, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and Judy can do all that. Operated really well out of the slot. Um, was you know Russ's deep ball seemed like it was a little off last year. Um, you got to get the offensive line fixed, but you know you Joe Lombardi in too for some more. You know you might not like Joe Lombardi all that much, but him and Sean Payton have worked really well together. There's some rumblings of maybe Breeze and and Russ getting together in the off season to help. Um, Russ kind of take in how this system moves and operates. Um, and I, I think, you know, Peyton will get the best out of Russ. And Judy is is a player that's still only 23, had a little bit of injury problems, but we know that the route running is top notch um, and the athleticism is, is, you know, pretty good. He was 12th in yards per route run last year with 12.8 and six in yak per route run was 6.1 had a hundred targets last year, just under a thousand yards, six TDs and 68 receptions. But again, this offense was broken and he was, he was uh, still something that was seeming to be a positive uh, in this offense. And Sutton got a little banged up down the stretch. Um, and, you know, we could throw a little bonus by, I think, I think Sutton's a fine buy too. Cause he's even cheaper if you want to buy the cheaper oh, yeah. asset. Oh yeah. He's also, um, he's also four years older. So for sure. Um, my Alexa just went off for some reason. Um, but yeah, no, Jerry Judy is, is my last buy in this, uh, scenario here again. I just, offense is kind of broken. Um, uh, and I like, I like the idea of Sean Payton operating with, with Russ and really you could say Russ is a buy too, just throwing, you know, it, it he's been like six, six round, fifth round QB. So I think there's opportunity, right? in there but jerry judy same with hollywood maybe even i might even you know trade you a little bit more than that mid first round right after jsn and addison go i'd i'd be yeah you know, potentially willing to trade you jerry judy yeah i'm there trade I'm, the, I'm there with you there on judy more so than brown yeah uh, brown would be a little bit further to the back end like one nine ish yeah okay um but um and, and you know Obviously, super, subject to super change. flex one nine is my cutoff. I think there's a solid group of those four quarterbacks and the five skill position players, and then one nine one ten one ten is that spot where I'm kind of if I got the one ten, I'm kind of like okay, w- what am I doing here? I might am I think I actually have the one ten in one of my in one of my uh, rookie drafts, and it's a league that I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do there. And I'm like, okay, what is it going to cost me to move, move up a couple picks here to get out of a tier break that I think I have here where either I can grab a quarterback or I can get one of the, one of these top, one of these top five skill position players. So definitely yeah. something to take a look at. It's, it's a great, it's, it's a big reason why you should have tiers. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Who Who's your last guy in, in the, in the uh, buy right now, for sure. What are you doing? Not even buying these guys, uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think we're keeping up with the theme of broken offenses here, um, and we're going to go to Indy, and we're going to go to. I could probably name three guys in Indy who I'm interested in based on cost, um, and that will be uh, Michael Pittman. I think Pittman remains underrated. Um, he's finished as wide receiver seventeen and twenty the last two years with uh, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan at old Matt Ryan, um, Sam Ellinger, and Nick Foles throwing him the football. I mean. Right. <laughs> what, what, what do you want the man to do here? Um, yeah. Doing all that. Um, you're bringing another offensive minded head coach. And is it, is it Stitchin? Steichen? 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 Steichen. Whatever. He obviously, ha- he's done a lot of great things. So that hopefully there's going to be, I mean, there has to be a, a, the quarterback position has to be, has to be upgraded in Indy. They're going to take a quarterback in the draft. It just matters of who they're going to take. Right. Um, if if it's Levis, I don't know if I don't know if I want. I'm still interested in buying Pittman at the level I am 
that I, that, that I am now, but I'm still interested. Um, I think if, depending on what quarterback goes there, I think that could, that could change people's thought process of these indie skill position players. Uh, I, yeah, they don't. The, the Ursay doesn't seem like he wants is going to want to wait around. He's going to try to probably get up in that one or two. I would think. Yeah. Um, and then maybe he's throwing fake smoke up there, saying that he likes Bryce, and you know, we'll see. But I, I think that that they're ready to to pounce and get maybe the guy that they want, and and yeah. instead of playing the old guy carousel that they have been uh, kind of doing. So I, yeah, I think that's. A fair point. I don't know that it will be Levis. Uh, maybe it is, um, but yeah, uh, Steichen there has um, you know there with Herbert in in L.A. and then he was there with Jalen, so he's he's had his fair share with quarterback. So it would seem yeah. like they're in decent hands with when if, if they do get a rookie. Um, yeah, of seeing you know kind of two different styles of of play and and doing well with with both of those guys for sure. Um, so I think I think that yeah. they could be in decent hands there. Some interesting some interesting stats of Pittman here. He was the second. He is number two in total route wins and number three in win rate versus man. Hmm. So the guy is getting open. It's just he's just he was. I think he was one in top. He was one of the leaders in targets. It's just like his a dot has just never. It's just was low because I don't think that was part of the part of whatever they were doing in Indy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, they need to address the offensive line a little bit there as well, too. There's probably needs to be some more quarterback wide receiver um, rapport building there as well, too. So um, and Pittman, if nothing else, Pittman could be somewhere else next year. He's he's a, he's a free agent after this year. Let's see unless he resigns a contract. So something if you're not if you're kind of down on Indy, he could be gone after this year anyways. Yeah, and I mean, we I know for, as a whole have been pretty up on Indy, and right now I'm wavering a little bit on. And so let's see what they can do here in this, yeah. you know, off season and 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 see what can happen. But I, I've I like Pittman a, a good bit, so I think that's. A I think problem. I don't know if this is hyperbole or not. I think Pittman has the talent to be on the level of T Higgins. Okay, I like that. I like that. So just it's a to guy, be, just yeah, just it's a guy who could be going from sixth round draft capital to third round draft capital, and doesn't really take that much. Yeah, I think we're getting more. If you're getting a little bit higher end targets, the targets are there. They just have to be more than six yards down the field where his A dot was last year. If we move that to eight to nine yards, it's a game changer. Yeah, I I, I agree a hundred percent. You just you just need a little bit better system to operate in. It was just it was shit over there that you thought the offensive line would be a little better. You lost JT. They just didn't really. They haven't found an identity here over the last yeah. two years, and they they need to find one. Yeah. They're still reeling from the loss of Andrew Luck. <laughs> right. Right. So, uh, all right. Six six trade targets there for you. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. We appreciate you. Uh, we're going to be bringing you more trade targets. We're going to be talking combine, prospects, drafts, startups, rookies, all that kind of great stuff. So be sure to catch on um, with the likes of a nice little subscribe. We'll catch you next time. Peace.